what can I do? What can I do to have an effect on a topic like climate change? When it comes to something as significant as climate change, I often find myself paralyzed. Like I feel like I personally can't make a difference. And I know that many of you feel like this too, feel like, what can I do? And so what I want to do with you today is really go through some ways that you as an individual can make a difference, maybe an unconventional way. One of the great things about climate change, but one of the many intimidating things, is the number of solutions that are out there. We see policies like a carbon tax, or maybe renewable subsidies. What about a cap-and-trade system? It worked for sulfur dioxide. We can try it again, right? What about the Paris Agreement, International Agreement, or the Green New Deal? We can use a carbon fee and dividend. We can use afforestation, geoengineering, methane reduction. What about electrification of infrastructure? Mars, maybe. A polycentric approach, cafe standards, and, of course, breakthrough technologies. I stand here today as a mechanical engineering major who, who wants to work on things like this in the future, but I think it's important to realize all the politics that go into creating breakthrough technologies and why we're not seeing so many of these implemented today. We need to get involved in politics. Techno-salvation is not the option. And when you think about politics, we don't get involved as a community, perhaps because we feel like it's not our place, or we feel like we can't make a difference, nothing's moving anyway, or we feel powerless. And so a method that I've found has been empowering in this, a potential solution, is the concept of divestment. But before we really talk about divestment, let's frame the problem together. The first puzzle piece of the problem is one that everyone here, I'm sure, is familiar with, and that's high emissions. We're simply emitting too much CO2 into the atmosphere. And if you do the math, you'll see that we can emit roughly 565 gigatons of CO2 equivalent before we reach the 2 degrees Celsius limit. And that's not in a year or in my lifetime, that's overall. Do you know how much we have in reserves right now to extract for our use? We have five times that amount. So clearly, this is a problem we need to solve, a behavioral change we need to make as a community. But why are we not seeing rapid policy change? Why is this not happening? Why are none of the policies that we talked about earlier being implemented? And that really brings us to the second puzzle piece, and that's one that's not discussed as frequently. And that's the concept of disinformation and anti-climate lobbying. You see some of these organizations trying to confuse average citizens. They say that those who believe in international cooperation are out of touch with reality, and that victory will not be achieved until climate mitigation efforts are thwarted. Since the Paris Agreement, $1 billion has been invested by the fossil fuel industry into disinformation campaigns. That's $1 billion that could have been going to renewable energy funding, $1 billion that could have been going to climate adaptation, and $1 billion that could have been used to building a more sustainable business model. So that's where you come in, and that's where the concept of divestment comes in. But what does divestment really mean? As the term kind of already says, divestment is essentially removing assets from a company. It's the opposite of investment. And in this case, those are removal of assets from fossil fuel companies that engage in disinformation. But when we think about divestment, what I found interesting was that the actual definition of the verb to divest is to deprive someone of power and possessions. And that's what divestment is at its core. It's a movement, a collaboration of people coming together to remove power from those that have too much to the community asking for change. And when we think about successful divestment movements, we think about the divestment from apartheid. And the success of this was not merely financial. It was bringing people together, changing public discourse, and educating those that were not knowledgeable in the moral efforts against this. And we see this now with climate change, too. This movement is only growing. And divestment campaigns aren't just campaigns anymore. We see actual divestment. 
New York City is in the process of divesting. The University of California is divesting. Its endowment and its pension fund. Berlin has divested. Philanthropic funds like the Rockefeller Fund have divested. 1,155 institutions accounting for $11.94 trillion in value have divested from fossil fuels. And this started with one person, one individual, at one institution demanding change. And that individual can be you, too. So let's focus this towards MIT. How does this look like here? MIT is an endowment of roughly $17 billion, and it gives that to the investment management company, which then tries to get the highest return on investment for MIT, so it transfers it to hedge funds, mutual funds, private equity, domestic and foreign bonds, and this then goes and is invested into the food industry, the tech sector, and oil and gas. And oil and gas is an investment that's made because it's steady. We all use energy. But it's not one that makes sense to me, and it's not one that aligns with the MIT mission. We are trying to advance knowledge and best serve the nation and the world. How do we do this if we are complicit in some of the acts that our mission is clearly against? How do we as students reconcile that as teachers? I think an important thing to discuss here, too, is that we do receive a lot of funding from fossil fuel companies, and we receive this for renewable energy research, and that is fantastic. I think that we need more investment in renewables, but until we see a drastic behavioral change, we need action, and that action needs to come from us. But we need to look internally, too. I don't want to paint a picture that the problem is simply one industry, because our behaviors and the way our actions reflect are what's driving a lot of this. So we need to change internally, too, as a community. And MIT has tried to tackle this with the Climate Action Plan. We want to improve our understanding of climate change in the Climate Action Plan. We want to accelerate progress, educate a new generation of innovators share what we know and learn from others, and use our community as a testbed for change. There are so many ways within this Climate Action Plan that you can find a way to make a difference. But if you look at the goals that we've set, we want to reduce our carbon footprint by 32% by 2030. If you account for the offsets that we've purchased, we've reached roughly two-thirds of this goal. But if you look at what our community has done, Without the offsets, we still have a long way to go. So internally at our community, we need to make changes, but we also need to make external changes. And so when I ask, what can I do? What's the difference I can make? What's the difference you can make? You can join a movement. You can start a movement. MIT has launched its climate action plan, but we need less plan and more action, and that action can come from you. And that's something that I've found here at MIT. I've found a community of people who have such a diverse set of thoughts, such a diverse way of approaching problems. It has given me strength, and it has given strength to the divestment movement at MIT, and it can give strength to you in whatever community you are. So if you take away one thing, I want you to realize how valuable you are, regardless of what age you are or what gender you are. If you're a teacher, a student, an engineer, if you're a world citizen or a consumer, you have something to offer to a movement like this. And a little action that you can take can have a big ripple effect, because there is power in numbers. And so the question isn't, what can I do or what can you do? The question is, what can we do? And with a movement like this, we can do a lot. Thank you.